Hello everybody. Well, it's just amazing. Huge thanks for getting us to where we are now. We're now over the line. The line was crossed on my 49th birthday yesterday, which was a fantastic birthday present from so many people. I'm really, really honoured by it and uh, touched. It's amazing, um, you know, I obviously was a little anxious <laughs> looking at the figures, particularly in the middle of this uh, Kickstarter campaign, but it's fantastic to be where we are now. We're now looking to see which stretch goals we can hit. So, as I say, very, very excited, very, very positive. This game is now getting made. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that absolutely wonderful? So, okay, this is the sixth dev diary for Elite Dangerous, and I want to talk a little bit about shields and ships, just to show that we've not got sidetracked. We are still looking at how we make the game, all the details, all those wonderful things that we will put in the game. Okay, so we've looked at both the shape of the shields and how the shields work and why, how it works for gameplay. Now, gameplay obviously being the most important thing. One of the things I love in um, battles is if you can think of a, a clever way to overcome the opponent, whether it's targeting a bit of the ship, all of this sort of thing, and shields are all part of that equation. Now, in the um, gameplay videos we've shown so far, we've shown the shields all lighting up as a single unit, which is actually how they're working at the moment in the game. But the plan is for the very smallest ships, there will indeed be a single shield generator and the ship will light up in uniform. But as the ships get bigger and bigger, much like with the original Elite, the uh, Cobra had a front and a back shield. We're planning that, so that would have two shield generators, which would deplete separately. So you would see them both start off as a bluey white and gradually decay down to red and disappear. Now that means if you're chasing a ship and you see that the rear shield is full but the front shield is very nearly red, it's worth trying to keep hitting the front shield because you're more likely to get through. On a very large ship, we're expecting to have as many as half a dozen different, different shield generators covering different bits of the ship. So if you see the rear right-hand one going red, if you keep hammering away on there, you will get through that shield first. So tactically, it's great. If it's your ship, you know to turn the good shields towards the enemy as you escape. You know, try and continually turn a bit right so that they're, they're hitting the side that's still good. So all of these things are great for gameplay. You know, also, as you can see, we've, done, we've put a little bit of effort in how they look. What we've got now isn't the final result, but it's, it's along the same sort of lines. What you see here is a list of the, you know, the different uh, shapes we've tried out, how, how it should look. That's, so firstly, the shape of the shield. Here we can see whether it hugs the ship really absolutely closely, whether it loosely follows it, whether you expect it to be curvaceous or just a giant bubble. And we thought of the gameplay pros and cons for this. Uh, obviously with giant bubbles and giant ships it'd be very very easy to get inside the shields but actually very frustrating if it's your ship. Um, what we've chosen from this list is one of the middle ones so here we see the tight bubble which actually hugs the ship very closely indeed but as the ships get bigger and bigger and bigger I mean the truly giant ships that you saw in Frontier but not in Elite it still will be possible to get a small ship in under the shields and you can directly hit the ship which won't be protected by the shields in that circumstance. Now we've also thought about what the shields look like, both when they're being hit. Um, so here you see some different effects we've experimented with. The final res result we think will be somewhere between the top two. So in other words, you will see the area just that you hit flare up rather than the whole ship. Um, and ideally it will highlight where the shield generator is based so you get a feeling for, for how the ship is working, if you see what I mean. Um, but with all of these things, we're, we're looking at it primarily from the gameplay point of view, both because it makes the ship visible, it makes the vulnerabilities highlight both to the person attacking. Obviously, the person defending inside the ship will be able to see uh, dials, instrumentation for each of these shields and will start panicking when one of them um, starts to go red and then goes down altogether. Uh, and then, you know, subsequently you start getting hull damage, uh, which... Uh, hopefully we'll see a little bit more of. You've seen some of it already in the um, videos that have already up on the site. So all very exciting, all amazing stuff to look forward to. We are absolutely delighted to be going ahead with this. Extremely exciting. Still join us, still a chance to get in, get a pledge. We've got fantastic stretch goals. It's, we're looking ever closer to the Mac uh, version also being funded um, to happen on a slightly later release than PC. We've got an additional stretch goal at uh, 1.5 million pounds where we will put an extra 10 ships in there that will be playable. Uh, 
obviously the further we go the better we go if we don't hit these stretch goals it doesn't mean these things won't happen they will just happen a little bit later so all very exciting a huge huge thanks to all of those who've pledged already it's really wonderful to those watching come for the ride it's fantastic already it's just going to get better thank you very very much merry christmas and happy new year to everyone who's been part of this process thank you